What's up guys? Welcome to my first special request video. I got a comment on one of my previous videos asking me to do a tutorial for the DS18B20 temperature sensor. Now this is a really cool sensor because it uses a one wire protocol. And what that means is you can hook lots of different devices up to only a single data wire and by use of addressing the different uh, sensors uh, it can isolate each one and read from each one individually. It's kind of like I squared C addresses, but uh, it's it's a little different. It only uses one data cable and that's pretty cool. So all you have to do is supp uh, supply voltage and uh, that's it, aside from the data cable. But you can use 3 to 5.5 volts to power this sensor. I've always had better luck with five point or five volts. Uh, every once in a while, when I use three point three, I can't read from a couple devices. I don't know why. It might be my mistake, but uh, I'm using five point five volts. Uh, if you'd rather use three point three, feel free. It should work just fine. Um, but without further ado, let's hook this thing up. So this one, I've already hooked up a couple Dupont cables to. Uh, there's also a through hole uh, sensor that is not wired up like this. Uh, this is just the waterproof housing for it with a long cable, um, but I soldered two different kinds here, so I just kind of had to adapt it. Um, but this is your data uh, cable on the yellow one, um, and this is your voltage and ground right here. So I'm just going to plug voltage and ground in right here. Uh, data, I'm just going to put on this top rail right there. And then we need to bring data over to physical pin 7 on the Raspberry Pi. That's GPIO 4, and it is the only pin on the Raspberry Pi that can use uh, the one wire protocol. So be sure you hook it up to the uh, right pin. Uh, that's the fourth one down on the left side here. Um, again, just look at the pin out. It's physical pin 7, GPIO 4. So you go one, two, three, four, boop. Easy to remember, because it's four, four. Um, and then I grabbed the wrong jumper here. Let me grab a different one. Okay, let's see here. Oh, that's the wrong bit. Okay, that'll work. Okay, so now we're going to hook up our power and ground to I'm using five volts, so it's one of these top two on the right, and then the third down on the right for ground. And then we need our pull-up resistor from data to voltage. So I'm plugging in this into this top rail here and bridging that over to voltage. And that's all there is to it as far as the wiring. It's really simple, like I said. Uh, you just supply voltage and then the data cable. And this is basically just going straight from here to GPIO4 on the Raspberry Pi with a pull-up resistor uh, from the data cable to voltage. So that's all there is for the wiring. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into power and log into the Raspberry Pi headlessly from my computer. Uh, if you are not sure how to do that, I will link a video in the description on how to get your Raspberry Pi going headlessly. So you can just log in from your desktop and program it from there. Or if you have a screen and keyboard hooked up to your Raspberry Pi, that'll work just as good. So just going to plug this in. Now we're cooking. All right, let's go over to the computer. All right, so before we can uh, connect to the one wire sensor, we need to do two things. One is go to sudo raspy config, go down to interfacing options, look at one wire, hit enter. Would you like it to be enabled? Yes, okay. Arrow over to finish. And then it will ask you to reboot. Uh, do that and it come back to this screen. 
Once you get back to this screen, what you're also going to need to do is type in sudo nano boot config.txt. And this is editing a boot file. Uh, you come all the way down to the bottom and uh, dt overlay equals w1-gpio should already be there if you've enabled one wire if it isn't go ahead and type this in um, but you will need to add comma gpio pin equals four once you've typed that in hit control x uh, and it'll ask you if you want to save it i already did that so it didn't ask me to save but just hit y and press enter Okay, so next you're going to see a few things pop up on my command line because I'm kind of uh, figuring this out as I go. I used to do it a little differently, but this is a much simpler method. So uh, just follow along in the order I have everything in the video and you should be good to go. What we're going to do first is we need to import the library that we're going to use to read the sensor. Uh, that is sudo pip3 install w1 therm sensor and I'm gonna wait for that to install uh, mine's already installed so it'll probably just say condition already satisfied but uh, on yours it should go through the installation process yep requirement already satisfied okay so yours it'll go through an installation process it'll only take a few seconds um, but now we're going to use nano and create a script that runs, uh, it will read the temperature about once every second and display it. So we're going to import time and then we're going to go from W1, w1 therm sensor import W1 therm sensor and then create sensor as an object sensor equals w1 therm sensor open close then we're going to make an infinite loop by saying while true uh, bah, 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 bah. temp equals sensor dot get temperature print temp and then time dot sleep one second then hit control x save modified buffer yes name to write or I'm just gonna save it as therm sense thermsense.py be sure to say add that extension on there thermsense.py and then we're going to say ls uh, blah, 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 blah. we see thermsense over here uh, one w sensor was another one I made uh, while I was debugging it but thermsense is the one we just made so we're going to say python 3 thermsense if I can spell dot pi and that should display the temperature. There you go. It's 21 degrees in my office. Uh, now let's just make sure it's working. I'm gonna hold on to the sensor and it should start going up in temperature. Yep, yeah, there we go. And that's how to connect a DS18B20 maximum integrated one wire temperature sensor. And let go it should start going down here in a second yep there you go so it is reading the temperature and that's how you do it all right guys well there you have it that's how to use a ds18 b20 sensor with the raspberry pi um i can't think of anything else to say about it but if you have any questions please comment i uh see all the comments um so i will do my best to help you out uh, if you run into any problems, but I guess that's all I've got for you. So if you found this video helpful, please like, uh, subscribe if you want to see more, and all as always, be sure to be kind to someone today. Peace.